What's up, guys? Welcome back to the NS Builders podcast. So last week I told you the story from when I was a child to when I started NS Builders, and I feel like I, I abruptly stopped um, at, you know, when I started NS Builders and kind of fast forwarded. So let me dig into NS Builders day one to NS Builders day seven and a half years, whatever that equals out to. Uh, someone's going to do the math, leave it below. Yeah. Um, and before I do that, if you guys, you know, like I said, if you guys want us to dig into a particular topic, make sure you leave a comment below, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications. You want a t-shirt, there's a link below. You want to book a one-on-one call with me, link below all that information is below appreciate you guys tuning in every week to all of our series let's get into it so ns builders i started and i you know i left my i left my quote-unquote corporate job started with a kitchen renovation i locked up a whole house renovation uh and you know just to recap that whole house renovation came from the architect from my previous job who bought a house and offered me the job i i'm I'm pretty sure I still bid it. I think I priced it and I had to be competitive and I'm sure uh, he's a great dude, uh, but I'm sure he beat me up on it um, because I was young, naive, and he should have. I didn't really have any business probably doing some of the things, but I knew I could. So took on that job and while that job was going on, I was taking on other small carpentry jobs. I even went as far to subcontract for another builder, which was a terrible experience. Um, You know, I just... It wasn't what I wanted to do, um, but I I continued to grow the company and and by growing it I just basically kept going after bigger and bigger projects, and I really you know I really believe one of the reasons I I was able to grow and do bigger and bigger projects is because I kept reinvesting my money, and I don't mean that in like this like super detailed like um, you know thought out way I really mean it in the sense that I just poured more money into every project I was doing than they were paying me to. And I started my business with no loans, no debt. I owned my truck. I owned my tools from collecting it over the course of a decade before I bought a trailer when I, with my graduation money for my tools. Like I didn't have any debt with the exception of, you know, my pickup, I guess my pickup truck I, I didn't own. Uh, actually, no, at the time I did, I ended up buying, uh, my first new truck later. Um, it was a 99 regular cab, short bed, Silverado, white with 230,000 miles on it. My favorite truck, whitey, we called it. Um, so anyway, so we, I start the business and I'm doing these projects and I'm, and I'm looking at each and every one of them. Um, and, and it was kind of like referral based. I did that whole house renovation. He worked for a really big architecture firm in Boston. He referred me to one of the other architects that worked there. I went and did that project. It was a condo renovation in the city. This was my like my introduction to working in the city. Uh, again, I, I had a pickup truck and a trailer. So you can imagine what working in the city was like with a pickup and a trailer. Thankfully, there was a parking lot nearby this job and I pull in and I would get charged for one spot, but I had I took up two spots with the trailer. Um, and, you know, I did that renovation and it was just kind of, um, I, I had met, I had met people on that job, uh, interior designers on that job that ended up referring me to other projects, um, to other architects. And it just continued to snowball. Um, and I always had this kind of like anchor job, meaning like I had this one renovation going on and then I would kind of peel out and do a couple small carpentry jobs, whether it was a deck, whether it was some built-ins for, for, for an entryway, whether it was a mud room, like I, I always had that, that anchor. Cause that way when my subs were that on site doing, you know, painting or plastering, like I wasn't just sitting there watching them. I was out doing other things. Um, looking back and, and realizing how we run jobs now, it probably, I probably would have ended up more, you know, uh, with a better result on a lot of them if I had been on site over managing them, but I wasn't charging for that. So it wasn't fair, uh, to the client or it wasn't fair to me really, because I wasn't making money. I, I was, I was effectively working for free at that point. So it was a lot of referral. It was a lot of referral based. Um, and you know, early on in, um, in this, so I've been doing this for seven and a half years. So right when I started my business, I had was on Instagram, and it it was something that you know I was just sharing what I was doing. 
It wasn't, it was mainly for my friends, you know, and, and other people. I wasn't really engaging. It was just like, hey, check out what I'm doing today. I love my job. I'm working for myself. I'm so excited, et cetera. Throw a, an ugly filter on it, posted it, right? And I remember probably the first year, maybe a year into it, someone had reached out and said, hey, I follow you. Uh, I see the tool. I see that you have all fest tool. It really, you, you obviously really care about your work. I see the quality you're putting out. I would love to chat with you about this bathroom renovation I have going on. So I reached back out and I said, absolutely. We went and looked at the job. We priced it. We didn't get the job, um, which was okay. But that's what triggered me to realize that's a, that was like, all right, I can use Instagram to market my business. And that's where I started paying attention in, in posting more and more. I was like, if I'm going to get people reaching out, I got to be active on this. Um, it was probably very similar time that I, you know, for me, I have an obsessive type of personality. So when I like something, I'm going to learn everything I know about it. And that's, I mean, that's literally anything. If I find a company that I like, you know, I'm going to dig into that company and find out, excuse me, I'm going to dig into that company and find out everything I know, like who runs the business, how they run the business, what, what are their, you know, what, what's, what makes them different? What? I dig into everything because I, I want to learn. And it was the same thing with this mar- this Instagram and social media thing is like, who can I look to to teach me how to use this effectively? And if you don't know him, Gary Vaynerchuk, he was one of the guys that was on, in the forefront of it and I was paying attention to what he was doing. And I knew it was a very different industry, but I, would, I, lo- I always look to other industries on how I can attribute that back to home building. So I was paying attention to what he was doing. I started realizing that, you know, I needed to pay more attention to the way I I posted on Instagram and how I engaged with people and ultimately led me to video. And, you know, I was probably a few years into business. Um, Maybe I'm trying to do the math here. I think it was my second year of business or, or second into third year of business is we bought, my wife and I bought our house um, in Boston that was a full gut and I was running projects but I had slowed down and I had taken the time to try to renovate this so we can move in Um, we didn't have a really tight timeline until we found out later that my wife was pregnant and we needed to move in before um, before the baby Um, so yes that was that was a little bit stressful but um, I'm trying to just go backwards here so Oh, so going back to the social media side, when we decided to renovate our home, this is when I reached out to 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 Doug, and I was like, Doug, I'd love to film this job. Doug lived in Maine. I'm in Boston, right? You're in Maine, okay? What is it? At the time. So I wanted to make sure I, I wanted to film this. So we were, he would drive down from Maine for one day. He'd hang out with me all day. I'd do whatever I was doing. And he would, and at the end of the day, he's like, all right, tell me what you did on camera. I did it. You guys, if you guys go on our YouTube, go back to the Tuckerman series. It's all there. I have a a huge, ugly ass beard, beard, and my wife's in the first episode and then never was after that because she was so uncomfortable. Um, But we decided to film it. We we never finished the series. Uh, I think it just got too taxing on the both of us. Um, But it was, you know, we had a lot of fun doing it and we were seeing a ton of engagement. Um, so I'm still going down the path, the, down the road of, of social media with Instagram. I end up working with another video production company, uh, who, who was great. Um, but I, I kept wanting to work with Doug because we just meshed from our creativity standpoint and he really understood how to capture what I wanted and showcase it in the way that I wanted. Um, well, our media started really, um, getting traction in the sense that people were reaching out to Doug, like, Hey, I want a video like that. And one day I was scrolling Instagram and a video popped up and it sounded like mine and it looked like mine, but it wasn't mine. And I reached out to Doug and I was like, dude, all right, we need to figure this out. Like we got to figure out the finance, like however I can get you to come on board full time, let's figure out how to make this happen. We'll dig into that in a future episode, but that was like literally the start of getting Doug on board. And then we just went full tear on on video but 
at the same time, I'm looking at building my company and I'm using social media to promote my company. And, and the promotion was not only from a client standpoint, but it was also from an employee standpoint, a subcontractor standpoint. I was getting other subs and, and people reaching out like, hey, I'd love to work with you. You seem to really care about what you're doing. And it gave me, I felt like this advantage where you know I was using this as a tool to promote what we were doing and promote how we did it and, and the, the intention that we put behind our work and people were attracted to that. You know, and then in turn, I was then turning around and promoting them. And, you know, we have some trades that are still with us today that they came in. They never, you know, I think about our metal guy, Rich, he he had not done architectural metal work. And he came to me and he said, I want to do architectural metal work. And we did a railing together and I pr- helped him promote it. And now that's all he does is he's strictly doing architectural and be- I mean, like meticulous metal work, um, you know, just fantastic stuff. And that was the way I wanted to build this. I wanted to build this great culture, not just internally and not just with my company, but just like of people that really cared and wanted to put out really high level work. So that's really, we we started building that company that we started, you know, started hiring people. And, you know, as we did, people started looking to me as a professional in doing that which was odd to me. It was like, what do you mean? Like, hey, can you give me some advice on hiring? It was like, I was looking for advice to hire. Can you give me advice on social media? I was like, I'm I'm reading advice on how to run social media. You know, like, can you talk to me about like how you got that job? It's like, I'm trying to figure out how to get the next job. But I quickly realized that, you know, I'm asking people that have done it and they're doing the same thing. And everyone is in different positions. So, you know, I think that oftentimes people... Uh, get confused in the sense that you have to know everything or you have to you have to you you have to get to a certain point in, before you can teach someone else something and that's wrong and that's a, a poor way of thinking of it because the guy that gets like the Mark Zuckerberg if he if you're at the top you know the chances of the guy at the beginning of you know trying to build a social media platform just for an example like the the chances of being able to connect to that person is really difficult but the guy that's a few steps ahead of you is way more apt to help you. Like it's like the rising tides raise all ships, right? Or the the coattails. Everyone's on the coattails, and everyone's trying to elevate everyone else. You know, it's those that want want to grow specifically. So I started realizing that all right, this there is an here's an opportunity where I can like start helping people. I can start, you know, hey, I was there a year ago. This is how I made it through. I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm not going to I'm not going to shy away from that. I've made a lot of mistakes in hiring, firing, you know, in business uh in 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 client selection and job selection and job costing, job financial like all of the mistakes I've made. And I say that knowing that there's going to be a, a whole lot of more mistakes that I'll make. It's just it, we're we're human. We 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 make mistakes. But I was always trying to learn. So I was always grabbing onto the next person that was in front of me and paying attention and asking and, and not being shy to ask questions. And that's something that biggest piece of advice I can give. Don't be shy. Don't be shy about asking a, a question you know, to anyone. And that's I've always felt that way. And you know, there's trust me, plenty of times I've been turned down or hey man, like I can't give you that or you know that I, I'm just not comfortable or I just get blown off and I don't get a reply, but that doesn't stop me. I'm still going to continue to ask. And, you know, and I'm not going to ask with, you know, no intent to pay it forward or pay it back or, or be mutually beneficial. Like I want to be mutually beneficial. And that's really what stemmed this whole podcast side of like the modern craftsman podcast. You know, we, I was, you know, we were building this awareness on social media and, you know, the guys over at Cucan Brothers, Ryan Malkeen, reached out and wanted to put together this panel of uh, panelists, like guys from social media that were, you know, in the building industry. And that's, he put together the Tyler, John, and Nick, you know, together on stage. It was, um, it was um, moderated by Sean Van Dyke. And we, that was the first time that Sean, uh, um, that Tyler, John and myself had all met together in person. And it was called the Modern Craftsman uh, panel discussion. And we ended up taking that and running with it as a podcast. And that's really what stemmed this whole, you know, um, 
thought leadership, you know, mentality of like, we can be a thought leader in this industry. And we really started focusing that that podcast around like, let's bring awareness to this industry, bring awareness to the struggles and the successes of people that are in this industry that have done it, people that are going through it, people that are trying to get into it, all of those and shed light on that. And that's, you know, from there, I took that and then continued to build my personal brand and continue to build my, my business brand all by always, you know, it's all centered around being authentic and being true to who we are today and who we want to be tomorrow. So going back to the NS Builders, you know, as we continued to grow, we continued to take on larger projects and people within the company became, went from being carpenters to being superintendents to being project managers. And that was all driven by the project that we were taking on. What, what, what was required on these jobs? You know, what do we need on this job? And, you know, talking about it sounds very structured. Looking back, you can ask anyone and I would advise you to do so. It was, it was, you know, we were, we were figuring it out every step of the way. And there's no shame in that. We were, you know, when we didn't know something, we were asking and we were upfront about it. And there's no shame in it because you can't do your first project. You cannot do, you, you can't build your first house without building your first house. You know, there's, there's always going to be opportunity and you just need someone to believe in you. But first you need, you know, here's my, my, me getting sappy, but it's like, you got to believe in yourself before someone else can believe in you. If you can believe, if you believe that you can do that project, then you can convince someone else that they, that you can do that project. That's how you get to do that project. Nothing else. Like, yes, maybe your, your family member, you can build them a house. There's all of these other opportunities that maybe allow you to put something on your portfolio. Maybe your friend needs a, a renovation done. You can use that on your portfolio. Again, no shaming doing that. But you, not everyone has that opportunity. So be upfront. You know, I was interviewed for a job a couple of weeks ago and we had never built something to that caliber, to that scale or that price point. And the client straight up asked me, you know, well, how do I know I can build that? And I, and I said, because, you know, for what I lack in experience, I'm going to make up for in other areas and, you know, in the diligence to make sure that we're putting the very best quality into every single step of the way. Maybe we haven't built something that large, but we've built, you know, a plenty of things half that size. And just because it's double doesn't mean we're going to approach it any differently. It's just we're going to take the same exact steps that we took for the smaller project and apply them to the larger project. And we're just going to put the same amount of quality, same amount of care. And for, again, going back for the things I lack experience in, I was going to lean on my peers. I'm going to lean on people that I, I look up to, other builders that I've become friends with that can walk me through that. My subcontractors that have worked with other builders that have done it. I can lean on them to realize that I don't need to understand 100% how their scope gets accomplished because I can sit down at a table and walk through it with them and, and then understand it. So it became, you know, it, you know, centered back to this social media and, and brand awareness and brand building. It was like, I really focused on that because it was giving me this, in my opinion, advantage to network with people, to, to, you know, develop relationships with people that would then allow me to escalate my career, escalate the projects that I was doing. And, you know, I, I've been saying it a lot recently and it was only a couple of weeks ago, someone had mentioned it to me. I've never really thought about it, but there's not a lot of people you know, that can say that they've sat down for three hours, two hours, three hours and, and interviewed another builder in this industry. And I've been fortunate enough to do that with Tyler and John 180 times. That's a lot of interviews. And to be able to do that and, and take that information and learn every one of those episodes, you know, and just like this, like this is, you know, I'm hoping I'm spewing information just like those, the modern craftsmen. But I'm taking information from that and I'm attributing it to my next move, my, my career path, the things I want to do personally and the things I want to do professionally. So, you know, with that being said, if you're, you know, if you're in a position that you want to dig into something specific that, you know, maybe we've touched on a podcast, maybe we haven't, you know, I am offering some uh, slots and I've been advertising this consulting call thing. It's going really well. We've had a, a half a dozen calls already. Uh, we have over a dozen calls scheduled out for the next few weeks. Um, 
doing it limited once a week. Uh, if you're interested in, feel free to click the link below. I'd love to chat with you. Um, it's something that I think, you know, like I said at the very beginning or very in the middle, that the opportunity to connect with people in, and just talk through things, you know, that have experienced those things or, or currently experiencing those things, everyone has something to teach and certainly everyone has something to learn. So that's the second part of this series gives you a little bit more insight of who I am, who NS Builders is, how we've got to where we are today. If I've missed anything at all, drop a comment below and let me know. We'll dig into a future episode. Until then, we'll see you next week.